My name's John. And I'm Sean. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and this is hacking the Kubernetes software supply chain with dot zip domains. Uh, so in this talk, kind of what we want to present is uh, a little bit of background about dot zip domains, the trouble they may cause, uh, the, the role of social engineering in that, uh, a little bit of a demo, and then the, the, uh, the defense against something like that as well. So uh, before we get too much further, let's go into a little bit of background on what .zip domains are, uh, how I somehow found myself with the Kubernetes.zip uh, website, uh, and then get into a demo. So uh, .zip domains, or top-level domains, became available in May of this year, and generally to kind of the outcry of the internet. People, people generally just said like, this is, this is probably just bad for the safety of the wider internet. Having a top level domain like John's cool website .zip or Sean's cool website .zip or something more nefarious like myfiles.zip or kubernetes.zip uh, just gives you kind of the air of like, oh, is it a website? Is it a zip file with a bunch of stuff in it? Um, who knows at this point? .zip, top level domains are out there. So I got it in my head that, oh, like who has Kubernetes.zip? Like somebody picked it up already and this was like months later at this point. Uh, and I was able to get it for like $12. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the, the first thing I did was immediately redirect it to Kubernetes.io. I talked with Dims a little bit and we just made sure that like, okay, like we don't want this like out in the wild. Uh, I can only imagine the kind of things people would do with uh, some nefarious actor saying, hey, I, can you help me figure out what's wrong with my cluster? Here are my logs, kubernetes.zip. Can you help me, right? Um, yeah, so .zip, top level domains, websites, probably, probably not a good idea for just the general safety of the internet. Uh, but let's break down how a malicious actor would use social engineering, a .zip, top level domain, uh, and, and some tricks uh, with a malicious URL to make this a much, much worse kind of attack. Um, so a quick show of hands. Uh, who thinks that this URL goes to google.com? Nobody, wow. Uh, who thinks it goes to bing.com? A few people, yes, you would be correct. Uh, so let's break this down real quick. The first part, HTTPS, that's the protocol. The next part, before the at sign, is essentially a login, like a username login to this website. And then bing.com is where that would be directed. Uh, let's do this again, but with a more malicious looking URL. Again, we have HTTPS, github.com, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, archives, refs, head, at kubernetes.zip. Same thing here. This actually goes to my website, kubernetes.zip. Uh, we have the HTTPS protocol, and then with the orange part is the username login at kubernetes.zip. The really tricky part here, uh, you think that those paths would be escaped in the URL, but those are actually Unicode to 2215 slashes, not the ASCII slashes, which gets interpreted as one username login. So that's, that's really like the social engineering trick here, is that that whole orange bit gets interpreted as one username login and sends you to kubernetes.zip. There it is, very bad, very scary. Uh, let's, let's jump into a quick demo here. Uh, so, uh, what I have here is just my terminal up with, with some pre-baked stuff. Uh, I don't wanna have to download a bunch of this uh, over, over the conference Wi-Fi, but uh, this is that Google Bing URL. Let's click that real quick. And that's just gonna take us to bing.com. It takes us right there. Now, some browsers, and I've had a very hit or miss with this. We just saw it went straight to Bing but sometimes a browser, maybe depending on caching, will actually say, hey, this, this URL may be trying to trick you. Uh, in Firefox, it'll li literally say, this may be trying to trick you to take you to a different website. Uh, sometimes with caching, sometimes not, it might take you just directly there. So that took us right to bing.com. Uh, if we look at uh, the real URL, this is what the real URL for the, for the master zip on top of GitHub looks like. And if I click that, if I click that, there we go. Uh, that's gonna start downloading a zip file. I'm just gonna cancel that real quick because 
We don't want to have to do that over Wi-Fi. Uh, but what that zip file that I just started to download is, was if I go over here to code on the Kubernetes Kubernetes repo, and then I come here to download zip, uh, that's that same URL. So I could be some cloud provider. I could be somebody who needs to distribute Kubernetes and get the code, build it, send it off, run it, whatever. And maybe this is the way I do it. I'm gonna download the zip file from, uh, from the, the tip of, of the master branch on Kubernetes. Uh, so what I thought that the, the most likely attack using a Kubernetes zip file uh, top level domain would be is to actually have just a very simple redirect to an S3 bucket of some malicious code that looks almost identical to what you would get from the top level uh, zip file here on Kubernetes Kubernetes. So let's look at that. Uh, if I now cat uh, the, the, the other one, we notice here, again, that at sign, and in my terminal, I, I can almost not tell with this font that these are Unicode slashes and not the ASCII slashes. So if I click that, ah, there it is. That is the, the warning that says this may be an attempt to trick you. Uh, but you know, we're being socially engineered, so like there's big problems, we gotta do stuff now, so I'm just gonna continue. And it does something almost similar. It's downloading that zip again. Uh, let's cancel that out. And that's a very similar experience to just getting the zip off of Kubernetes, Kubernetes. So now let's say that we're gonna continue down this path, this kind of thought of experiment of having the, uh, the code bundle. And we're gonna go to some pre-baked stuff that I have. Uh, right in here, and if we if we pop in here, you know this we've we've seen this. This is this is Kubernetes. Kubernetes. It's got a bunch of Go code. Uh, this is the stuff. Like my boss is telling me, I need to download this right now and build it and ship it. Looks good enough. Let's go. Uh, I might build it. You know, do like make command. Let's cancel that just so that we don't actually build a bunch of stuff. Uh, and what that's going to drop is into our outputs, which anybody familiar with actually building Kubernetes will have seen this local bin for this architecture. We see a bunch of this stuff. This is great, we got the Kubernetes things. Let's, let's ship it, we built it. Uh, now let's actually run, run kubectl, just to demonstrate. And I'm just gonna do like a get. Oh, that's, that's bad, what is that? And that's, that's really kind of the, the end of this proof of concept is showing that you know, there are some modified bits, some modified code that I was able to essentially um, you know, just serve you over S3 via that malicious looking URL and a very similar flow to what you would do to get uh, that zip file off of GitHub. Uh, let's go in here and let's, let's search for that. Clusters, is that how I spell that? Why is this not working? Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. Uh, let's go up a few directories, one more. Let's search for that again. There it is. And this is the chunk of code that I injected in here into just the top level Cobra command, but this could be anything. This could be some bits that were modified on the kubelet, on kubeadm, on kubectl. Uh, and at that point, anything is possible. With modified code that you're distributing uh, or building or uh, running, anything is possible at that point. Uh, so again, Really, what we're talking about here is the role of social engineering in these kind of attacks. Uh, what this sort of scenario looks like is like, oh, like something bad is happening and we need to patch this critical CVE. Here's a link to some of the code that we need to ship. And it looks legit enough. If you were to click that link uh, in this Slack message, that would take you to my Kubernetes.zip website, redirect you to the S3 bucket to get the malicious zip bundle. Somebody might click into the CVE and be like, oh, that's pretty bad, this is a real CVE and we should probably f patch it, we should probably fix it. Uh, so where I'll hand off to Sean is with this bit, software artifacts without software validation can be dangerous. So, so Sean, what, what do we do about this? Yeah, so what do we do? Uh, for one thing, like John said, this is a social engineering hack. Uh, this is kind of the bad idea. You're busy, you're in a rush, you don't know, uh, you're doing other things, and oh, can, I can't look it up. Can someone give me a link? And they do, uh, but that's not the link that you want. Uh, so really making sure that you get your sources from somewhere that you can actually trust, so that you're going somewhere that you recognize and getting those. And then not only getting that source, but then you can make sure that you're actually downloading what you're expecting by looking at the contents, 
and that the provenance of that source is really coming from who you think it's coming from. So talking to a few people, they, there, there is the GitHub link. You can download the sources from there. Uh, I actually found out a lot of people don't realize that the Kubernetes project does publish, uh, has a website where you can go and download uh, actual release artifacts from it. So that's, you know, don't grab a random link. Uh, actually go to somewhere, recognize that's, that's maintained by the community and has everything you need there. Uh, there's also downloadkubernetes.com that has each of the, these things, each, each different uh, artifact that you might want. And one of the very good things here is besides the down link, download link, uh, there are these links for checksum and signature. So not only can you download from a source that you can trust, but once you download that, you can get that checksum and then looking at it locally, you can take that checksum, uh, <laughs> look at the checksum file that has this long string, and then locally you can run uh, SHA-256 sum, Windows has a similar PowerShell command, uh, you point that at the file that you've downloaded, and you can make sure that the number that you're getting locally actually does match the number that's published that is validating that, yes, this is the same file. Uh, it hasn't been modified. Uh, it hasn't been corrupted during the download. So that you make sure that what was published on the website you actually get. Now, the one downside about that is these are both from the same website. Uh, what if this website was compromised? Uh, so a next level besides just actually validating that checksum is, uh, oh, and have some links there to help. There's actually some very good documentation. Uh, besides that checksum link, there are these signature and certificate links. And that's where you, you um, checksum makes sure that nothing was corrupted in what you downloaded. The signature is where you can really validate that this really is coming from the Kubernetes community or from you know, vendor X or wherever, whatever software that you're pulling down. So very similar to how we check the checksum, we can download those signature files from that site. And once we get the signature, we get the certificate. These demos always go so much faster when you're just doing them by yourself and think that you're gonna talk and it's just gonna have to catch up. Um, and then they, they do give a nice command on the website that shows you, you know, run this command and that'll take this signature file and verify that the signed zip file actually does match. And then that's where you get this verified okay that yes, this, this certificate file, which you can open and look at and see who it's coming from, is what signed this software artifact. And then one more thing that they do publish out there, every release of Kubernetes also generates, every build generates a software bill of materials. And if you haven't seen software bill of materials, SBOMs, what that basically is, is a text file that has a standardized format that lists everything that's included in a software, in a deliverable of what you're getting. Uh, so it is, it's a text file, you can open it and read it. Um, it is a standardized format, so you can figure out where things are. It's not something that you really just want to browse through. Uh, again, they do a great job on the website, and there's a link at the bottom here. Uh, they give this sample script that you can run. Uh, there are a lot of tools now that are starting to work with SBOMs where they can uh, check the signatures in that SBOM file. They can also scan, uh, because of this list, everything that's in this software deliverable. It can go beyond that and, and see, are any of the included dependencies here uh, want versions that, are, that have known vulnerabilities, soft, uh, security issues? Uh, so you can really, if you tie this into those types of tooling, you can really get a lot more confidence in what you have and what you're going to put into production. Uh, so ideally, you know, you can run all these commands, you can look at this SBOM, but using these tools, doing these checksum validations, uh, that's a great thing that you can just put as part of a CI/CD pipeline, and then as part of your own build process, 
you can really make sure and have that validation that yes, what I, especially through automation, what I'm pulling in and using, I know is something that's going to be good. Now I did also want to bring up another option. Uh, I'm one of the co-chairs for this uh, special purpose operating system working group under Tag Runtime, so I'm legally obligated to mention it. Um, <laughs> but another option, uh, there are, you can go and use uh, distros that are geared towards uh, running Kubernetes and running th containers. Uh, so here are a few of the options that are part of this working group. Uh, they've all done the work for you and do that validation as part of their build process and making sure that what is included in this distro is what's actually coming from the upstream community. So main thing, watch where you're getting things from. Uh, even when you're in a rush, it, it's so easy to just grab a link from someone, but you know, kind of like way back in the day when, when people could email around viruses and, and nothing could stop them, uh, same way, don't, don't just click on things. Uh, validate what you have, make sure it is really what you think you have, and make sure it's coming where you, from where you think it's coming from. And this applies to Kubernetes, it applies to a lot of uh, other projects out there. A lot of folks are publishing the checksums, publishing signed artifacts. Uh, so take advantage of that where you can. And then my own personal thing, don't just pipe a random URL into a, a super user shell. <laughs> it is really convenient. Again, if you're getting this, if you know where you're getting this from, uh, it is a great convenient way to install a lot of software. Uh, it's also a great convenient way for someone to get you to install a whole bunch of other things that you don't know you're installing. So just be careful. <laughs> and hand it up. Uh, yeah, this is just a quick attribution to uh, Bobby about, um, I think really discovered the Unicode and the ASCII, um, you know, really applied this well-known, I think, uh, hack to uh, URL spoofing to using top-level domains. So a uh, huge attribution to Bobby, and thank you very much. Um, yeah, short and sweet, we would love to spend a little bit of extra time doing Q&A here if anybody has questions, but yeah, I hope this was enlightening to the dangers of social engineering and uh, the unfortunate unsafety of the internet these days with certain, certain domains and things. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, can we get the mic for questions on? Go for it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so a short question and then a, a more substantive question. Mm -hmm. I noticed while you were going through this talk that the URL that GitHub generates ends in the branch name .zip. So a lot of these repos are going to have master.zip, and that domain has actually been registered. Is it known who that domain belongs to, and are they a good actor or a bad actor? Uh, I mean, that's a great question. We could, you know. Uh, and then the more substantive question is when you're talking about verifying signatures and certificates and keys, uh, of course, it's great to publish them on your own website, but the first thing that a malicious actor would do if they breached your website is generate their own certificates, keys, Whoops. et cetera, mm -hmm. and sign everything so that it looks legit. Is there another site? Because that's always the answer, right? Is you should get these certificates and keys from a third party channel. So where else can we get these keys and certs and things to verify these through an independent channel that is not, that is under separate control? That's a great question. And, and yeah, I'll reiterate that. It's, that is an issue. If you're pulling, you know, as I showed, there's this download site. It's got the, these convenient link, links there. But as he said, if someone were to compromise that site, it's easy enough for them to replace those checksum and signature files. So you can look at that signature file and, and you know, depending on how thorough they are, you know, maybe you can tell if that's actually the signature of who you think it is or not. Uh, but yeah, ideally you're getting the zip file or the software artifact from a known good location and able to verify those signatures and checksum from another separate, well-known, trusted location. I'm not aware of a, like a, a common registry for, for those types of things. That's actually an inter interesting idea. Um, I think it gets to the interesting point about like, 
the software supply chain and like even something like that could end up being a single point of failure. And where do we end up distributing all this trust to? Um, you know, I really hope that people aren't just downloading zips off of GitHub or releases, but in theory that in itself would be a single point of failure. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's an answer to that right now. <laughs> uh, to answer this question about, you know, like who has master.zip and, you know, it's, it's registered. Uh, you could dig into the DNS records, try to find from the registrar who has it. Most of the time, those uh, registration details are masked by the registrar, so who knows? Uh, you could reverse DNS, look these up, and figure out who the registrar is and stuff, but um, typically DNS registrars make that very hard to figure out who actually has uh, a, a website. So, I mean, even if I put in, you know, and DIG has additional stuff, Kubernetes, you know, and this is not a talk about dig, but uh, even that just comes up with, I mean, it looks like uh, also uh, Google's uh, DNS servers. So uh, this wouldn't surface information about me. It would just surface information about Google's DNS, unfortunately. Uh, if there's no other questions, anyone else? Nice. Is it? One more. Just good news that Master.zip is registered by GitHub. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> it's safe, everybody. It's safe. That's great. <laughs> and that probably makes sense. I mean, I'm sure there's, uh, you know, plenty, plenty of good websites that point to, like, actual use cases for things. Um, I could see that being, like, a legitimate use case for GitHub uh, with, that, with that domain. But, um, again, it's, it's, it's not hard to find really good socially engineerable web uh, uh, URLs that, you know, some of those Slack messages, like, I would not be able to tell. I would click those links right away. It, yeah. it, it, and that's, that's the scary question we hope that you can ask yourself and your organizations, like, uh, people just kind of suck at those kind of validations. Um, that brings me back to my last slide. You know, software artifacts without software validation are just, are just dangerous, so. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have too much else. Uh, anything else, uh, was One other thing that may be worth checking out. Uh, there are some projects here that are working on this whole thing. Uh, Tough, if you've heard of TUF, that's a great framework for everything that, that builds in a lot of these security checks. Uh, so if you're looking at how, how do I distribute my software and make sure that I'm able to provide a really good way uh, that sort of addresses some of those issues of, uh, you know, someone compromised something and changed signatures. Uh, Tuff has a lot of protections for that. Um, there's also Sigstor and some other projects around here that can tell you a lot more about it than I can. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully in a few KubeCons, this is a relatively solved problem where, you know, getting some random code zip file off the internet would be uh, pretty easy to... Um, not ship into your pipelines. But uh, with that, we'll be around for a little bit, for a few minutes. Uh, yeah, thank everybody very much.